Okay, so you clicked on this video to backport mods from Special Edition and Anniversary Edition all the way down to Legendary Edition. And I'm going to help you with that. Now, as you saw from maybe your searching among the internet for ways to backport mods, it's very bleak and there are a bunch of tutorials out there, but they're very complicated except for maybe one of them that I've seen. So I'm going to try to simplify it here and give you a straight shot to backporting mods. Now, a big disclaimer here. If you're going to backport a mod, do it for your own sake. Don't just backport it and then publish it off as your own because that's bad. But if you're going to backport a mod for your own use, go on ahead. I see no problem with that. So the way you're going to do this and how hard it's going to be will rely heavily on the mod itself. Some mods will be a straight shot, extremely easy to backport. Some of them will take a lot more work and effort. So first off, let's start with the resources that you will need for said backport. Now, if you're going to backport any mod, well, most mods at least, you're going to need this guy, Cathedral Assets Optimizer. This one will basically change the resolution and format of Skyrim Special Edition assets from textures and meshes down to Legendary Edition which is very, very handy. Download this one from the Nexus. I'll leave a link in the description and let's move on to the next one. Next one would be the Elder Scrolls V edit. Now this one is very popular and a lot of people use it for modding and tinkering with mods or just tinkering with the game in general. It's a very amazing tool that I'd recommend getting familiar with, but you don't have to worry about that because we won't be using it a lot. I mean, we will be using it a lot in this video, but not to its extreme potential. You'll just be clicking a couple of things and you should be fine. And the last thing we need is the script deconversion xedit sse to le. This is the script that you will be used in conjunction, in conjunction, I mean, with uh, the Elder Scrolls V edit in order to convert mods. Mainly because um, Skyrim Special Edition mods work on a 44 format, and we need to bring them down to 43, which is the format that Legendary Edition understands. So, after you download all those three things, we'll move on to the next step. So, now that you've downloaded the Elder Scrolls V edit and the script, the next thing we need to do is apply the script in the Elder Scrolls V edit. So, what we're going to do is we're going to find the folder where we downloaded our Elder Scrolls V edit. It's over here. We're going to go to Scripts. And as you can see, there are a lot of scripts. So we're going to open the file that contains the convert SSE to Skyrim, which of course is this one right here. As soon as you get this one, you open it as so, and then you take this little file over here, and then you just place it over here. Once that's done, you're pretty much ready to convert most Skyrim mods. I mean, most Skyrim special edition mods to SE. And I will show you as such right now. So the mod in question that we will try to port would be Rhine's Western Watchtower. Now, remember that watchtower that you go to at the start of the game to kill your first dragon or whatever? Yeah, that one. It's very lame, so we're going to try to make it a bit more flashy with this very, very amazing mod. One tiny problem is that this mod is only for special edition, but we're going to fix that problem today. So we go to the file section and we go to this, which is basically the manual download. Don't download it with the mod manager because that will just crash your game. Download it with the manual download. Once that's done, we'll move on to the next step. So now that you have downloaded Ryan's Western Watchtower, we take it from here and we place it in here. We just open it up. We take the file itself and we place it here. Now. Not a lot of mods will have that. Not a lot of mods will just have just one file, as you may know. But since this one is just an ESP, this makes our job 10 times more easy. But we'll go into other scenarios later on, as you see in the video. So right now, we'll just deal with this one. We just cut it and we place it in our data folder. Paste. And as you can see, it's going to be already in there for me because I already did this. But for you, it's just going to be plopped in there. Once it's in there, we'll move on to the next step. So, now that you've placed Ryan's Watchtower in your data folder, next we need to open up the Elder Scrolls V Edit. Remember that app that you just downloaded? Yeah, open it up. Now, 
Now, as soon as you open it up, it's going to show you this screen. Now, it might show you a different screen where there's like a Patreon link and whatever. Just cancel all of that. Just hit X on it. And then it's going to show you this screen. This screen is going to be very scary. And because it has every single mod that you've ever put on, all you have to do to fix it is click, is right click anywhere and then click select none. Now that you've selected none, none of those are going to boot up. And we only need one mod from this list, which should be the Ryan's Watchtower. So we type in search R Y N and it's right there. So we double click it. Now that we double clicked it, it's going to take its sweet time to load. It's not going to take a long time, don't worry. I'm on a very, very potato laptop, and even then it's taking not that bad, actually, to load up. Of course, don't touch anything until you see the word finished down here. There we go, as you can see. Then select this boy. Just left click it once. Once you left click once, right click it. And then go to apply script. Once you go to apply script, you should see a lot of scripts down here. What we want is the one that we just added, which is this one, convert SSE to Sky. If you can't see it, all you have to do is just type on your keyboard, convert, and it should be right there. Select it, then check include scripts from sub subdirectories, and then click OK. It's going to take a moment, and then, as you can see, it turned bold. As soon as you see it turn bold like that, and it has applied a script, that means you're done, you're finished. All you have to do is just click on it and click check for errors. And as you can see, it has zero errors. So now that we're done with that, all you have to do is just click control and save. I mean, control and S on your keyboard, which will save it. Of course, have it checked and then click OK. And boom. Now it says for me, the file has not changed and that's mainly because I've already backported it. And now we just leave. So now that we're done with that, all we have to do is go to Vortex or whatever mod manager you're trying to, you're using and enable the plugin. Now that it's done, all you have to do is enter your game and it should be fine. Now I'm not gonna enter my game right now because if I record gameplay, this video will not work. Believe me, I'm on the most potato of potato laptops, so I'm just not gonna even try. However, this should work fine as it was working in my game anyway. I already had it enabled and I was playing with it. It is, it works perfectly. Now that's just one mod and one scenario. Next, we're gonna look into a bit more of a complicated scenario than this one, but it should be easy as well. Okay, and now we have a different mod in our hands. This is the Daedric Shrines Malakath. Now I already know that there is an LE version of this mod, but I'm still using the special edition version just for testing purposes. So if you want this mod, you don't want to go through the hassle of backporting it. There is already an LE version, but I'm going to backport this one just for testing purposes. So how do we backport this one? Same principle. We just go here to the files and we go to the manual download, be it the 2K or the 4K version, which I'm assuming you're going to pick the 2K because legendary edition. But if you want to pick the 4K version, that's fine. Nothing bad is going to happen. Just download that one. And now that we have that, we just have to open up the file, Shrine of Malakath 2K. We take these files and we put them out. Now that these files are out, we open up, a, we start up, I mean, a new folder and we call it as such, Malakath Statue. Now that this one is here, all we have to do is take the meshes, we put them in there, the textures, we put them in there and the ASP itself, and we put it in there. Now that we have that, all we have to do is convert the meshes and textures to the LE format, because Special Edition has a different format, and it's way more high res and way more dumb and stupid, and we don't like it. The ESP itself has the same principle as the one that we did before. We just put it back in the data folder, and then we convert it using Xedit. But this one, the meshes and the textures are a different story. For these, we need to use the different resource that we have, which is Cathedral Assets Optimizer. Now, wherever it is that you did download Cathedral Op Assets Optimizer 2, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is to have it installed. Once Cathedral Assets Optimizer is open, you need to change the profile to the Elder Scrolls 5. Remember that. Don't you need to SE or Fallout 4. We need the Elder Scrolls 5. We set that up. Then we open directory. 
and we find where we placed our mod. Now I placed mine right over here. See, now that we have it over here, we just go to Malakath statue, we select it. You can just do this or you can just have it selected like this and then you select folder. Now, as soon as you have it as selected folder, make sure you ma make sure that this and this are unchecked and then go to the meshes, make sure these two are checked, textures, make sure these two are checked and then just hit run. As you can see right there, just changed all the assets to a LE format. Once that's done, all you have to do is close it and we're done. Now all you have to do is just take the file as is or just take them manually and insert them into your data folder to have the mod installed. Or you can just take this file as is and place it inside of Vortex. Go to downloads, go to here and just take Malakast statue and just place it here. As soon as you place it here, Vortex is gonna automatically import it and give you the option to install. Just click yes and the mod is going to be installed and you're good to go. I would also have to repeat that after you do the meshes and textures with digital assets, opt assets optimizer, remember to take the ESP, put it in the data folder and convert it to the LE format and then take it back from the data folder, put it back in here and then install everything together. Make sure you do that. Okay, and now we have the last and final way to backport a mod, which is actually the one that I was first introduced to, which is the BSA unpacking thing. This is a mod that also has a legendary edition version, but that came out recently, but when, back when I backported it, it didn't have an LE version. So I'll just use that as, as an example as well. Same principle, files, and download the manual version. Of course, whatever version you're looking for, 2K, 4K, all the optionals. Of course, make sure you have the uh, predecessors or the LE counterparts for the requirements for these ones. And you should be fine as well if you have them. Download it and I'll see you in the next step. And here we are. So the season traveler armor and accessories. We open it up, we take it out of here and we place them we place them here. There we go. All right. Now that that's done, this is a problem. The BSA. The first problem that you're going to encounter. This is an easy fix, which is the ESP. As we've established, all you have to do is take it to the data folder, open up X edit and convert it, and then just bring it back here. This one though is going to be a problem, the BSA. To fix it, all you have to do is open up Cathedral Assets Optimizer again. Now that you have that Cathedral Assets Optimizer up and ready, I would also recommend opening up a new folder, calling it Seasoned Traveler Armor, or Seasoned Traveler Armor, I was in a hurry, and place those two files in there. Open up the, di open up the uh, directory and find the folder itself. Select folder. Now that we're here, now you get to select the Extract BSA. Select it. And then what that's going to do is that's going to extract the BSA back into its original form, which was the loose files version or the meshes, textures, and whatnot. You click run. Of course, make sure the uh, TS, the Elder Scrolls 5 uh, profile is selected and it's done. Now all you have to do is uncheck this one, meshes, textures, and run again. And bada bing bada boom, we are done. Now all you have to do is delete the BSA, leave, and as you can see right now you have the armor with you. All you have to do now is go to Vortex and install it normally as such. And that's it, we're done. That's how you backport mods. Now, if you want a more um, in-depth tutorial, I'll leave a link in the description for the best tutorial I've found on backporting. It's actually the one that I learned this method from. And there are a lot of ways to backport other mods and to fix other complications in that thread that should probably help you. So if you have any, any questions about uh, how to backport or any um, hiccups that you've ran into, it probably was addressed in that uh, forum. So. 
I hope that helped. And hopefully I'll see you running around with great mods that you weren't able to play with before. If you have any other tips or tricks that you're willing to share as well, I'd be happy to listen to them and I'd be happy to learn from you as well. If you have some, leave them of course in the description. And if you want to support my channel and help me become a YouTuber in the future, I guess, like, comment, subscribe, do all those great things. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll do another video like this soon.